Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and it's time for another rapid fire critique where I take 10, in this case, 11 of your best photos and give them a critique a critiquer sin. If you're looking to submit your best images, the place that I've been asking people for links from is on my text line. Yes, this is a text number. I do reply. So if you sign up there, I will ask from time to time for links to go do critique or critique sins, and that's where I'm grabbing them from. So let's jump into these images from Stephen Wojo Wojewizek. Stephen Wojewizek. Um, all right, we've got a Canon EOS 70D with a 70 Georgia 2.8 L IS 2 USM. This was taken on October, October 13th, 2019. The reason I look at the date and I look at what the gear is taken with is that will determine how I critique images. I've said this before. If you've got the most expensive gear in the world and your images suck, I'm going to tell you that you need to maybe go back to lawyering or doctoring because your Leica images are not very good. But on the flip side, somebody here has a 70D, but they have a 70 to 208. And you know, you take into consideration how stuff is, and that's how you do your critiques. Oh, and as a side note, if someone didn't ask you for a critique, like on Instagram, don't put your two cents in. If somebody didn't say, please critique my work, don't critique their work unless they specifically ask for it. Or you reach out to them, I know I should get to this critique, and say to them, hey, could I ask you a question about your work? Would that be okay? Something like that. So we got this first image. We're at one, uh, F4, uh, which is fine. I mean, we're right in front of this barn. It wouldn't make a difference whether it was F4 or 2.8 or F8. It really wouldn't matter. One five hundredth at ISO 200. Settings are perfectly fine. I'm happy with the composition and framing of this image. I would tweak the processing just a little bit. I'd bump up the exposure, throw a little bit of contrast and, and clarity in there, and I think it would pop a little bit more. That's one of those things that I see a lot with doing the mentorships is that uh, there's just some tweaking needed to the editing of the files, but I like this shot. Um, what were we at? We're at 70 millimeters. Now something you could also try in this situation, you get this type of shot, but you also have the kids step away from the barn and then you zoom out to 200 from a distance, from a distance, the world. You do that from a distance, then you shoot it at 2.8 and you can get a little bit of separation from that barn door right there. And that could be the difference between a good shot and a better shot. It's not saying that one is better or worse. It all depends on what, it, what you capture, but also it's not about just getting one picture. You gotta think of those other angles when you're out there so that you can pick and choose which one might be the best one for you. All right, we've got this girl. We, looks like we popped a flash on this one. We've got the 7200 also. Uh, it says flash off, did not fire. There's absolutely a flash here. You can see it right in the eye. Um, I love the composition. I like the way the background is. I like where the, the, the cropping was done, whether it was in camera or after, above the thigh. So between the knee uh, and the waist is a pretty, good, a pretty good spot. It's not awkward at all, but I would punch the contrast up tremendously. We need a little bit more contrast in here because it's coming across super flat and washed out. Not washed out, but it's coming across super flat. I know if we pump this up, it's gonna look much better, but it is a good shot. I like the composition. Oh, geez, look at you. Why are you so upset? Why so blue, little boy? I don't know, but he's so damn cute. Um, 168 millimeter, F5. Wow, we're at F5. So this is something that, I mean, we've got that 2.8. I'm not sure why we would be shooting at F5. Um, the background would isolate a little more. Not saying that just because you have a 2.8, you always need to do it, or if you have a 1.4, that you always need to do it. But I would have taken this at 2.8, seen what it looked like, taken another one, if you want, take another one at F4 or F5, just like you did, and then choose after the fact. I know this happens quick, so you got this shot, that's all that matters is you got the one good shot, and then you could move on from there. Um, I love the composition, I love that you're at that lower angle. The lower angle as a photographer is super important when you're photographing kids. If you photograph from top down, the kid looks small and it looks like a snapshot. If you photograph from on their level or slightly below, it makes everything look more extreme. Processing wise, I think, I mean, you guys, like people like some of the matted look, but I do think a little bit of tightness in the contrast is going to go a long way in this shot. That is a beautiful shot. Um, all right, I mean, it looks like the, the skin is too glowy. We're at 67 millimeters. This time we were at the 24 to 70. This was taken in 2020, so we gotta still have that 70 to 200. I would still use the 70 to 200 and back my ass up. I'm not sure why we're at 5.6. 
why we're playing in that world. Um, we're only at, I mean, we're at ISO 100. You can bump that shutter speed up higher. The settings are perfect the way they are. I'm just giving out other things that could make them, you know, different, of course. So, <laughs> this is called for fro. Uh, it's kind of awkward between the trees. I just think that it's it's weird. It's like, look, we've got some weeds here, and then we've got this girl. And I think the processing needs a lot of work, and it does look like a little bit of a strobe. But the skin just looks like it's, you know, you pulled back too much. I just, I think it needs to be brighter. We need some more light in her face. And I would bring her on the other side of the trees and then use those things out of focus. I just, it doesn't, unless those plants have something to do with her and what she's doing, then I don't really think it's amazing. It's not terrible, but I don't feel that it just, it pops like, wow. But on the flip side, I do like that it draws you into the subject. You have something out of focus that's taking up the left side, the bottom side, and the right side, which is good, because sometimes I hate when people just have one leaf sticking out on one side and you're like, well, that's kind of weird. In this case, it's not bad. It's drawing you into the subject, so I can live with that. I just, it just doesn't grab me. I like this, I like the background. You know, don't tell me we're at F8 this time. No, we're at 5.6. Like in this, I, mean, I, I would, I mean, your settings are fine. As much as I, I want to say like, I want a faster shutter speed or I want this, 5.6 is fine. It's gonna give you everything in focus. It doesn't matter if it's 2.8 in this spot. It doesn't matter if it's four. It doesn't matter if it's eight, as long as your exposure is right. Uh, I think it's fine. I just, again, this could be a good black and white, or we could pump this up. If we pump this one up, I think we would get some nice results, just nicer contrast. Let me jump in here real quick to let you know that this video is brought to you by my mentorships. Now, if you're tired of people telling you that your images are amazing and your friends and family are like, oh my God, these are the best ever, ah, and you're not really sure, and you would like someone like me to give you a critique or to be your mentor, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorships, because right now I'm offering rapid fire critiques that are 15 minutes long that are recorded or live one one-on-one -on -one mentorships that are 45 minutes long. You can reserve your spots right on this page. You can check out sample videos of both a critique and a mentorship, as well as read a couple of testimonials. Again, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorship to sign up today. So this was in August of 2018, the 35 millimeter, oh, at 35 with the 24 to 70. Composition is great. The lighting, I like the way the light feels. I think this is fine. Um, I. I just think it looks like it's not sharp because of how flat the processing is. Again, it's personal preference on editing. Um, this is very nice. I think the person would be very happy with this. Uh, you know, I just think it's, I, I think it could be processed a little different. Now that's processed a little better. I like the feel of that. So we're at, now we're at, now we're at 2.8. Now we're at 2.8, 1 3 20th of a second. We got a ring light going on right here. Um, I like that the model knows what she's doing. I like this little purple thing in the background. Uh, I don't care that we cut her ear off. That's not bothering me. You've got the earring in there. But inside of the earring, we got a total reflection of the studio right here in the ring light. So that's something you may want to be careful about. I still would pump the contrast on this a little more. I would uh, change the levels to like medium strong or medium or strong. And I think it's just going to make it pop. See, it just comes across as a little too flat and not bright enough. I would go up ever so slightly with the exposure, go up with the contrast a little bit, maybe do those tone curves on medium to strong and, and, and see how it looks. I say do it to taste because it could look better. It's a great shot. I love the feel of it. Um, yep, very nice job on that. Ooh, geez. Why do I say ooh, geez? What do we got, an 85-1-4 this time at 1-4? Beautiful sharpness and nice, nice tones. Um, the skin is looking a little crunchy, and I don't know if that's happening in the edit or not. You gotta be very careful with, with clarity or when people put on makeup. Sometimes when regular people like me put on makeup, which I don't, but I'm, I'm just trying to say, if you don't have a makeup stylist and artist, they sometimes can go heavy handed. And then when you shoot tighter images, it kind of brings out the, the makeup a little bit. So for me, I feel like, love the composition, love the 1.4, think it looks really good. This is one where I would pull back on the clarity just a little bit to just not have such harshness uh, you know, where basically you see the pores and everything. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying I would pull back ever so slightly on that. Uh, but that was a very nice shot. All right, we've got another one of these senior type of portraits. 
I would shoot most of these with a 70 to 200 personally. That's probably what I would lean to. But with that being said, it's not bad at all. But it just, it's lacking contrast. You can see it in the face. It's just lacking that contrast. And I would bump that contrast, maybe warm it up just a smidgen because it's looking like it's the end of the day. We can kind of see there's some lights coming on. Uh, I, I can't tell you, is it a flash popped again? Because it's, 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 there's a highlight in the eye. I just think we're lacking that contrast. And either it's that or it's just missing the focus somewhere. But I would just pump that just a little bit. I like the framing. I think that works out well. Oh, geez, here we go. We got that low angle with the strobe, 11 to 16 with a 70 to D, 70 D, 1 6 40th, 2 8, 13 millimeters. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the way this feels. I mean, when's she dropping her rap album? I'll be like, yeah, what up? Let's listen to your rap album. Um, I think it's fine. Love the composition. Love the out of focus foot there. It brings us right up to her. She's got a really good pose going, and I really like that shot. Very nice job there. And that, I believe, is the last one right here. So what do we got? We got we got snow back with the 70 to 200 out of 200. 150th ISO 100. Yeah, I mean, I think that looks really good. Um, contrast, I'd go with, of course. Again, that's just that's just me. Just I want those colors to to stand out a little bit. I like the processing here. I think the one thing that I would ask for to make this picture better would be eyes. So I would shoot this so you get it, but I'd be like, all right, eyes. Give me those eyes. Eyes come up. She looks at you like this. Hi. Hi. How are you? You know, they look at you like that, and I think that those eyes might give you a little bit more of a better image. Um, all in all, I think there's some nice stuff in here. We got the, uh, this black and white is fantastic. The kid is great. Kid in front of the barn is very good. I just think it comes down to a little bit of processing. I always say it's personal preference. I have my style, you have your style. This is my critique that somebody asked me to do, so I'm giving my opinion. If someone doesn't ask you for a critique, don't give them a critique. That's, it's that simple. If they don't ask for it, don't volunteer it out of nowhere. Ask first, is it all right if I give you some feedback? And if they say no, don't be upset because there's nothing worse than just telling people what you think about their work and they didn't ask for your advice, all right? So if you'd like to submit your images, just follow the text line, pay attention to it. When I, when I send out a request, it will be there. That is a real phone number that I do interact with. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland Frono's Photo. Dot com. See ya.